and they had two ambulances there, about five cop cars, and, I mean, they weren't letting anybody in there until they ruled out everything, you know, on the site. And, uh, yeah. Well, okay. It, it was not – did it turn out that it was four rather than foul? Um, it was – It was. he um, He was taking a, some medicine for um, – uh, Please, it's a family show. We can't talk about that. Well, he he they did toxicology, and there wasn't anything in his system enough that would have would have killed him. He just he just. All right. I, I I don't mean I don't mean to make a you you yourself are, are somewhat lighthearted about it. It's a good way to remember a passing parent. And uh, the, your main point is pretty clear: is that this is very. So you you are in the in the corner. Or you're on the same side as I am, which is this is suspicious: the death of Scalia and the way it's been handled. Correct. And, and I. I can't believe the way they're trying to sweep in the sun of the rug and, and none of the media is covering this the way it should be covered. Yeah, but you look at my Facebook account and you got the, the, the trolls that work for Obama and the Democrat Party saying that we're all crazy, we're crackpots, it's a conspiracy theory, how dare we even ask the question. But the fact of the matter is, the real question here is how are they getting away with this without more people screaming for uh, an investigation? That's the real question. And the answer is because there's no media here in the country. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Do you do you feel do you feel that I, Michael Savage, am performing a service, or do you think I'm performing uh, a task that's unworthy of talk radio? Oh, I I def I listen. I, unfortunately, I only have a, a, a little bit amount of time to get to hear you because of my work hours. But I, you're doing a great service for this country. I believe 100. percent And. Uh, this can't be swept under the rug. This this has got to be shouted out on, on loudspeakers. It really does. Okay. Thank you very much for joining the dialogue. So you see there's a man whose father died in a hotel room alone, and the cops put up a yellow tape, and even his own brother couldn't get near him. So all you people are screaming, oh, you have no right to even raise the question, an old man died in his sleep. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about, number one, and you're not doing the country a service this has to be investigated all the circumstances need to be come out in the open and then you could say with any certainty or a certain degree of certainty whether he died of natural causes just passed away in his sleep like to sleep with a pillow over his head or are there uh in, in you know and in something here something more to it than that at least satisfy the american people who have a brain who don't simply watch stupid reality shows there's 30, 40 million people asking this question. I realize it's not a lot of people, given the demographics of America today, where a certain uh, hundreds of what, 100 million people probably, mm, 100 million people are probably illiterate in the country, including all the illegal aliens. And then you have all of the Americans who can't read or write because they went to a public school. Never mind know the law, not even a scintilla of the law. So what would you like to talk about? KLIF, Texas, Dallas, Holly. Fire, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say that, you know, I grew up in Texas, and my, my dad was 70 years old when um, he was laying in bed next to my mother and sat up and clutched his chest and had a heart attack. Oh. And my mom called 911, and um, the paramedics came. They put him in the ambulance, and they worked on him all the way to the hospital and pronouncing dead at the hospital. Well, the paramedic happened to have gone to um, high school with my brother and I and knew, our, knew us, knew our family. And he said that he felt like he probably couldn't have revived him. He felt like he had probably died there at the house or was not going to be revived. But he didn't want to put my mom through having to do an autopsy because he knew our family. So he continued to work on him and declared him dead at the hospital. Because it would have been required if he died even at home in his bedroom for them to do an autopsy. Well, well let's pause right there. By Texas law, if a, if a person dies in their home, it's an automatic requirement, no matter whether the law wants it or not? What, what, he, what the paramedic told me was he continued to work on him because if he died at home, it, it would have been required to be an autopsy. If he died at home unexpected he hadn't been sick he hadn't been just like oh so that's why they're putting out that he was sickly all of a sudden all of a sudden he is sickly at 100 illnesses that's the, that was the cover story another right out of a movie yeah don't we own the papers can't you get some stories out there run some stories that scalia was very sick 
Run some stories that he was very ill under a doctor's care. Get it out there in the media by the morning. Okay. Daily news. Very sick. Very sick. Italians sleep with pillows over their head. Get the news out. Churn the papers. So, okay, I got the picture, Holly. Thanks for joining the conversation. The time is 47 minutes after the hour. With confirmation that Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia was found dead Saturday morning with a pillow over his head and his clothes unwrinkled, nationally syndicated talk radio's Michael Savage called for an investigation on the level of the Warren Commission. Am I wrong or am I right? Back in a minute. All right. You know that I like to refer to scenes from movies to make points more clear for you. So the movie scene that doesn't match perfectly for Justice Scalia is one, nevertheless, that's worthy of remembrance. And that is the scene in the, in the Nevada brothel where the senator who opposes the Corleone family went for R&R. He wakes up with blood all over the room. And in the room, there walks the lawyer for the Corleone crime family in the following scene. Let's hear it. I thought I could help you, Senator. Hagan? Listen, Hagan. I did not. No, it's all right. I didn't do anything. It's okay. You're very lucky. My brother Fredo operates this place. He was called before anyone. Now, if this had happened someplace else, we couldn't have helped you. Huh. When I woke up, I was on the floor. And I don't know how it happened. You can't remember? I passed out. I don't know, and I don't understand why I can't remember. You don't have to remember. Just do as I say. They're putting a call into your office. Explain that you'll be there tomorrow afternoon. You decided to spend the night at Michael Corleone's house in Tahoe as his guest. I do remember she was laughing. We've done it before. And I know that I could not have hurt that girl. This girl has no family, nobody. Know that she worked here. All right, so Obama readies for next round in Supreme Court fight. He's already out there firing the next shots Tuesday in the battle to replace the late Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. It'll be the most intense political feud in years. He's going to hold a press conference. Did he hold it already? Did I miss it, Jim? Do we have it? It's on right. Is he on right now? Oh, we got to get that for the next hour. The thin man, the thin man is holding a press conference during a fundraiser, and he's going to talk about who he's going to stick into the Supreme Court pack. Maybe he can get uh, Cinderella. It could be he could put Cinderella in herself. I mean, she's a, she's about on the same level as uh, the others he's picked. I would say Cinderella, the judge in Texas who couldn't pronounce myocardial, is on the same level as Kagan Sotomayor and Loretta Lynch. So she's perfect. He's going to surprise America. Now Cinderella uh, is going to be the new Supreme Court justice. And anyone who opposes her is a racist. We'll come back with the press conference from the Thin Man on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. All right, so all you skeptics out there, if a black homeless man were found dead under sus suspicious circumstances in a, in a flop house in San Francisco, would there be an autopsy? Well, there'd be a press conference and an autopsy. There'd probably be a federal, federal investigation. Probably be an FBI strike team would enter that flop house to find out how the man died, even though he was homeless in a flop house and a junkie. They'd want to uh, do an investigation and an autopsy. But a Supreme Court justice dies suddenly in a hotel room, and everyone's screaming, I'm a nut for asking for an investigation? If you've listened to the show, you've had people calling who say that when a person dies in a hotel room in America, they tape the room off and they have an investigation immediately. But no, not, not a Supreme Court justice. No, not at all. It's already move on, nothing to talk about. 
So you could say anything you want about me, but you know that you're wrong, and you know you're working for the Obama administration. And I'll ask the same question over and over again. I'll ask you. It's a simple question. What do you think? Are you suspicious about Justice Scalia's death? Sound off on the Savage Nation by calling 855-400-7282. Right now, let's go to Barry from Honolulu's press conference. He's taken time out from an important fundraising event to tell us what he's going to do to pack the Supreme Court with another useless left-wing nut. Let's hear. Your term expires. I intend to do my job between now and January 20th of 2017. I expect them to do their job as well. All right. Uh, Mr. See who we cool. Got Jeff Mr. Mason. Cool, yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Cool. Thank you, Mr. President. Following up on that, should we interpret your comments just now that you are likely to choose a moderate nominee? Would you consider? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, 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 the, uh, I, I, I don't know Did where you, you found that. You shouldn't Did assume anything about the qualifications of the nominee otherwise, other than they're going to be well qualified. All right. Okay. Uh, following up, uh, yes. would you consider a recess appointment if your nominee is not granted a hearing? I, I, I think that we have more than enough time to go through regular order, regular processes. I intend to nominate somebody, to present them to the American people, to present them to the Senate. I expect them to hold hearings. I expect there to be a vote. That means no recess. Full stop. And lastly, as long as we're doing this in a row, um, how do you respond to Republican criticism that your position is undercut by the fact that you and other members of your administration who were in the Senate at the time tried to filibuster Judge Alito in 2006? You know, the, uh, look, I think what's fair to say is that hmm. how judicial nominations have evolved over time. Did you hear this answer? Uh, Can you believe this? Is this not kid caught him? Historically, the fault of any single party. He's not this answering the question. That's how the snake got where he is. Politics. That's how the snake got where he is. And by evading. Where folks are in the Senate and they're thinking, as I just described, primarily about: Is this going to cause me problems in a primary? Is this going to cause me problems with? He won't answer the uh, question. Supporters of mine. Yeah, all right, we get the picture. Two legs good, four legs bad. I get it. We read Animal Farm in high school. So we have some months ahead of us, boy. Oh, boy. No, keep playing it. Let's hear a little bit more of uh, Ace there. I think that he's definitely doing a great historically, job. Historically, if you look at it, regardless of what votes he's particular senators top of the have card. taken, there's been a he's basic a top of the card pack. a basic understanding that the Supreme Court's different. Yeah. And... Yeah. And uh, that's my field to play in. Uh, that's what I do what I want with. I manipulated the Senate any way I want. Now we're going to play with the Supreme Court. It's my sandbox. And and Michelle and I have decided that the Supreme Court is ours to do with as we wish. And join the bench, even if you don't particularly agree with them. Uh, and my expectation is, is that the same should happen here. Now, uh, this will be a test, one more test uh, of... Whether or not norms, yeah, rules, right, right, right. It's racism. We get play. it. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's all racism. All it's not that you're a fanatic reasons. maniac. But I, I do want to point out this is not just the Supreme Court. No. I mean, no, we have no. consistently seen mm. uh, just a breakdown in the basic functions of government because the Senate. Okay. Will you, not you hear the big lie? Anyone who opposes well, him has broken government down. You hear this? The big lie. Anyone who opposes any of his fanatical agenda items has broken government down. You hear this? This guy broke the government down. Because Is he still talking? There, there's a, a certain mindset that says we're just going to grind the system down to a halt. And if we don't like Are you the kidding? Can you believe this? The man who has run roughshod over every aspect of our lives is saying that they're causing the problem by not going along with his, his demands. Uh, the administration to do their basic job. Listen, uh, if, if this administration had done its basic job, if the Congress had done its basic job, they would have impeached this guy six years ago for what he had done. But because I will stop for a minute. Because they didn't stop the monster, he got more and more brazen. They could have stopped him at Munich. They should have stopped him at Munich. And now the maniac is so out of control that he's saying that they're wrong if they oppose anything he does. He's doing it again. 
He put out the party line. Anyone who opposes the Politburo is a bad person. That's it. Let's go back to the king again. Not the president, but the king.